An astronomer has many tools to study the night sky, but there is no instrument more important to an astronomer than a telescope. Just think how hard astronomy must have been without a telescope. Our ancestors looked up at the night sky and saw nothing but points of light. Without a telescope, we would have no understanding of the universe around us. We would think that we live in a small universe with no other galaxies around us. We still might think that the sun and the planets orbit around the earth instead of the sun. No type of telescope was as innovative as the reflecting telescope, which uses mirrors instead of lenses to gather light and magnify an image. This is the story of the history and impact of the reflecting telescope. Our story begins in 1608 when a Dutch lens maker named Hans Lippershe discovers how to make an instrument that can magnify objects three times. However, these telescopes were used for terrestrial viewing and not for astronomical viewing. The first person to look at the night sky with a telescope was Galileo Galilei. He made his own telescope with a magnification of 20 times and turned it to the skies. He saw many things in his telescope, and what he saw revolutionized astronomy. He saw the moon, and saw that it wasn't flat and perfect like people thought it was. He saw that it had mountains and craters. He also studied the phases of Venus, and discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter. He also noticed that these points of light around Jupiter revolved around it. We now know of these moons as the Galilean moons. Galileo also studied the sun and saw sunspots on the sun. He later went blind at the age of 74 and this is most likely what caused it. Galileo also was the first person to see the rings of Saturn, but he just thought that they were separate bodies attached to the planet. Also, it is said that he was the first person to see the planet Neptune, but Galileo thought it was just a star. Galileo's discoveries were very important to astronomy, and would have been impossible without a telescope. These first telescopes were called refracting telescopes, because the light hits a lens in the front of the telescope and is refracted to the eyepiece in the back of the telescope. And once these telescopes came out, people decided that maybe a mirror is better to gather light instead of a lens in a telescope. Now the first person to use, try to use a mirror in a telescope was Niccolo Zucchi. He found that it was not possible. He thought it was just not practical. But a man named James Gregory had an idea for a reflecting telescope, but he never built it. Robert Hooke built it later, but it was too small and the viewer's head blocked most of the light coming in. But this telescope was built after Isaac Newton built the first reflecting telescope. This diagram shows how the reflecting telescope works. A primary mirror in the back collects light and reflects it to the secondary mirror, which is at a 45 degree angle. It then reflects the light back to the side of the eyepiece. This type of telescope is practical for astronomy because it could be built bigger than refracting telescopes because you can only support a refracting telescope on its sides. However, with a refracting telescope, the mirror can be made thinner than a lens, and it can also be supported on the bottom of the telescope. However, these early mirrors were not made of good quality, so the true potential of the reflecting telescope was not realized until a later time. 
One thing about the early reflecting telescopes was that their primary mirror was spherical. This caused a lot of the image to be distorted. However, this problem was solved when a Scottish instrument maker named James Short created a parabolic and elliptical shaped mirror that had no distortion in the image. Telescopes then became larger and larger. In 1845, the 72-inch reflecting telescope at Burr Castle was the largest telescope at the time. It was a lot bigger than the largest refracting telescope in the world, which was created in 1895 at Yerkes Observatory at the University of Chicago in Wisconsin. The telescope was 40 inches and it is the second largest refractor in history. The largest was a few inches larger, but it was a total failure. And even with that 72 inch reflecting telescope at Burr Castle, there were still larger reflecting telescopes built. And these telescopes allowed us to see deeper into space than we have ever seen before. At the observatory on Mount Wilson in Los Angeles, California, a 100 inch reflecting telescope was built. At that time it was built in 1917 it was the largest telescope ever built and probably the most important astronomical discovery was discovered in this telescope. Edwin Hubble discovered that some nebula were actually galaxies outside of our own Milky Way galaxy. He also discovered that these galaxies were moving away from each other, which meant the universe was expanding. There were other famous large telescopes that were even bigger than the one on Mount Wilson. Like the one on Mount Palomar Observatory. But these telescopes are still not as popular as the most popular reflecting telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope, named after Edwin Hubble, was launched into space on Space Shuttle Discovery in April 1990. Its diameter was 2.4 meters, about 7 feet 10 inches. Even though this is a relatively small telescope today, Hubble can see farther than any telescope on the ground because the telescopes on the ground look through the atmosphere of the Earth which can distort the images. Hubble is what's known as a Cassegrain telescope. It's still a reflecting telescope, but the light travels in a different path. The light comes in the telescope, bounces off the primary mirror, and is reflected back from the secondary mirror all the way through a hole in the primary mirror. Hubble's first images, however, were very disappointing. During the launch of the telescope, the mirror had gotten distorted, which caused the images to look no better than the images on the ground. It was take two for the Hubble Space Telescope, and servicing mission one brought a new correcting device to help fix the problem with the telescope. The astronomers working on Hubble crossed their fingers and hoped for the best. When the new images came back, it was wonderful. They were better than anyone had ever hoped for, but there was much more to come. The Hubble Space Telescope's most amazing image was taken when it stared at a blank spot spot in the sky from September 24, 2003 to January 16, 2004. And this is the final image. It was called the Hubble Deep Field, and it is the deepest any telescope has looked into space. The galaxies in the image were around 300 to 4 million years after the Big Bang, which happened about 13.9 billion years ago. It seems like we've come a long way since the days of Galileo, and it may shock you that they're trying to build bigger and bigger telescopes. So what discoveries will those telescopes make? 
And I haven't even talked about radio telescopes, or infrared telescopes, which are revolutionizing astronomy as we speak. And none of these discoveries would have been possible without these large reflecting telescopes.